I have to say that the better and more professional managers and agents are, the less problems they have, the less fights they have. It's just the fact that folk who are confident in their skills and, and are well aligned don't tend to get into difficult conflicts. Now that's not always the case, there have been, been important fights, but generally the good operators are just good operators. Uh, question over here. Sorry, um, as a table of non-musicians, the people who want to work in the in the industry, whether that be um, managing or working for various other companies such as labels or publishers, is MIA the appropriate union for us, or would it is that a case by case scenario? Morning. Well, I guess that's a really good question, and I think as a new sort of section, our aim at the moment, because we are so young, we're probably about a year old, or AFMA is about a year old, the MEAA has been around for a long time, but this new section is quite new. So at the moment, we're trying to establish really good working relationships with venues, managers, labels, all of those sort of people, because musicians aren't the only people in the music industry, um, and if... If we're campaigning for musicians' rights that venues cannot provide, possibly, then it's kind of our, our, our campaign is not going to work. So, in terms of coverage, um, it's I don't I'm not sure where. I, I suppose to explain technically, I mean we're an industrial organisation, we're a registered union, we have a lot of powers and and rules we have to follow with that. But the, at the core of our rule is that we have industrial coverage over anyone who works in or in connection with the media, entertainment, arts industries. So um, we've set up this new section for freelance musicians. But anyone who thinks that a union is a good idea, I won't you know, go on about that too long now, um, but essentially um, you, you're welcome to be a member if you're working in your connection with um, the media and entertainment arts industry. Can I just jump in here because I wanted to make this point about Mia. When we were exchanging emails about tonight and there was a discussion about the, the topics that we were talking about, Katie chimed in and, and talked about how um, as a member of Mia, as a member of this union, you would have public liability um, and or insurance. insurance, right? So this is a this is a, an issue that you will face as an artist and as managers. Um, now this is was a revelation to me because I have to go through lots of hoops to cover our artists for um, public liability, and this is um, this is something that over the course of about eight or nine years, not one of our artists has ever made one single claim, yet we're paying significant money every year, and it's getting higher and higher based off all of the new um, uh, issues that come up and need to be insured. So I can't, I can't put a dollar figure on it, but it was in the thousands um, and, and up and up for some of the acts that I was looking at. Now, Mia um, don't even get close to that. So if you're a, an artist, I actually was calling Mia, I was actually calling Katie off the back of this email chain and just going, I'm going to sign up my artist to Mia for public liability purely. And obviously there's, there's other benefits that come with Mia. So I, I should explain that. The reason that that exists is we're a union, we have lots of members, and this is a small but growing section of the union. That means with insurance companies we can do what's called a bulk buy. Um, we're able to go in and get a, a policy and arrangement that covers the people who join us. It all automatically comes out of membership fees. And I suppose, that, I mean, that's some of the benefits of, of being a union. But as an industrial organisation, just the show of hands about how many people knew about the Entertainment Industry Act says to us that there is a lot of room for some building some industrial knowledge as well as a lot of the copyright and other things. I mean, there are awards that are in place that set the minimum standards for engagement for both um, live performance and, and recorded um, work as well. Most people in the industry that we come across, because we're new, don't even know that they exist and a lot of managers, etc., don't even know they exist. It's not about having a fight or an argument about them, but it's about something to change the industry so you guys are recognised professionally as all other people who are employed. In Without Australia getting into well. a demarcation dispute, um, the labels are pretty well represented with the um, Australian Independent Recording Lab Association, the, uh, the PPCA representing the interests of um, some of the larger companies. Um, there's lots of industry representation, but there, yeah, there's definitely always been a gap with the, the, the foot soldiers. Um, in terms of insurance, um, there's also the duck for cover scheme, which I guess exists symbiotically with yours, possibly the same oh, we underwriter. We used to recommend them, but we've got a cheaper one. <laughs> well, there you go, so they're better than my price. And that's the other thing with Mia. Being 
you know, from a group like the Herd, and um, you know, one of the uh, one of our members, um, old, his father was actually the um, the the what do you call it? Is it the, the yeah. The president, or the like, he was one of the, the. He was very heavily involved with Mia. He was the emperor of Mia, basically. The boss, the boss. And, and so we kind of weighed up this many years ago, except for the fact that it's not like uh, something where you go and get a degree and then you learn a trade and then you rock up to a house and you do a job and you get paid a fee and then you go to the next one. If you change, if you're looking at that from a musician's point of view, we're not. Um, waking up in the morning and going over to um, Marrickville and doing a, a three songs for Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, and then going over to Canterbury and um, you know performing a few songs for. We just do not have an industry that can be um, regulated by an award in in the majority of the context of most musicians' involvement with the industry. So that's why we kind of hesitated. But if there is. But, but for us, I, I, I genuinely mean that. From the public liability point of view, that's that's a that's an open door. That's a, a way to get in and then um, to follow on and learn more about those awards after that. Um, sorry to jump in. Um, also, I think a big part of what AFMA is wanting to do, um, and I think this is maybe something that obviously wasn't absolutely. Um, dedicated a dedicated topic tonight but there's something that I seem we seem to have missed is that you don't go from writing a song to a record label or a publishing deal or a you know there's this whole bit in the middle where you're performing and you're playing live and a lot of the time you establish your value as an artist in this section here and if you don't have the things that an artist, uh, I'm sorry, a manager, a label, or all of those um, sort of bodies, if you don't have what they see to be as a professional image, they won't even look at you. So I think that something that AFMA is really, really strong on is creating this professional image. Part of that, part of that means that Obviously, the music industry, I know I don't get paid the award rate for most of the gigs that I do. However, if a big television company came to me and said, hey, can you do a call for three and a half hours and it was less than the, than the award, I would say, well, absolutely not because I'm worth this much and you have this much and you can afford to pay me what I'm worth. So I think that's a very big sort of key issue that um, obviously musicians struggle with sometimes is knowing their value but that's where management and, and that's where booking agents can come in and say okay well you've done x amount of free shows now it's time to start doing ticketed shows and now it's time to start getting paid what you are actually worth so part of that is is sussing out what you what a, a fee is sort of means to you another thing is having a contract with with certain venues and with other musicians if that's what's happening you're being contracted out by other musicians and that's something that AFMA is really strong on and, and can give advice on as well. The other side of it is something like public liability insurance because there's a lot of major festivals and a lot of larger venues and a lot of the time when you teach you have to have public liability insurance um, and obviously Mia's fees depend on how much you earn um, but at a starting point it's something like $343 a year to be a level two, level three MIA member. And my public liability for teaching was $450. So it was just, it's sort of a no-brainer in a lot of ways. You join the union, you get this public liability insurance, and you start looking more and more like a professional musician who has access to these services. Thanks very much, Katie. Um, we're out of time. I need to quickly summarise. Um, and then maybe we'll see if everyone can ask the room a question and we'll see who gets the book. Um, I think you've heard that, I think the fundamental has been be informed and there are lots of resources. In, in the whole range of activities that Katie went through that you have to go through to get to a, a modicum of recognition for your success by those who will invest in you, all of those little engagements, those gigs, the interband agreements, that sort of thing. Um, Jennifer at Arts Law has got a great resource of free precedents. Julia and my firm advise bands on those sorts of arrangements all the time. 
Um, if you if you really if you're a slamming hip hop act and you think you can do better than anyone else on his label, then you should probably pitch um, pitch Tim there. Um, ben is my go-to guy for um, entertainment industry accounting, and there's probably no question too thorny that he won't call you back later with the answer on. And of course we have our representative APRA here who I think we all agree is an absolutely essential part. If you, if you, even if you're not a joiner, you've got to join, join APRA. Um, I'd like to thank New South Wales for putting the night on. I'd like to thank you all for um, coming here. I'd like to thank Nate for opening for us and, um, and Jake for hustling us into this room and, and keeping control of me. Um, this last little bit is the payoff, um, if you like reading. Um, I have got a brand new fresh copy of the Music Business book here, and what I'm going to try, this may not work, but we'll see how it goes, I'm going to get every panel member to ask a question of the audience, and we're going to end, it's going to be a yes or no answer or a, or a binary thing. You're going to indicate which camp you're on by putting your hand on your head or pointing at the ceiling. The last person standing gets the book. You can sample anything you want as long as you keep it under 15 seconds. No. Yes or no. Yes is our pointing at the ceiling. No's our hands on heads. Jono, your question. What happened then? Sorry, did we get a yes? Everyone got it right. I, was so I think we should do standing up. Okay, we'll just stand up, sit down. Uh, APRA controls the synchronize re the synchronization reproduction right in songs. So those of you who put your hands on your head, you're incorrect, I'm afraid. We can we control the uh, communication and performance rights. In a partnership. The individual pays a tax. True or false? True hands on heads. Fuck, I'm awesome at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's correct, yeah. Cool. Um, so if you put your hands on your bottom, you have to sit down. Uh, can an artist agent charge more than 10% if they haven't issued you with a written agreement? Yes or no. And what's yes and what's no? No. No, he's <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Just, I think we're fried. Yes is still hands on heads. No is hands on heads. I not playing this game tonight, sorry. You can't do that, and if you thought that you could, then you'd have to sit down. Is there an Entertainment Industry Regulation Act? <laughs> it's yes. The correct term for the, um, the, 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 uh, Money that APRA takes from iTunes is a mechanical royalty. Yes or no? The, 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 hands on heads is yes. Yeah, yeah hands yeah. on heads is yes. And um, good one. That we know that a few. All right. I'm sorry, guys. It's no. Oh, nice question. Here's a good one that Jules actually mentioned earlier. You have to register copyright to get protected, true or false. and accept your prize. Can we just have another round of applause while that's happening right now for all of our panelists, for our chair, Jules Munro. Thank you to our partners, Sydney TAFE, Arts Law Centre, the Australia Council for the Arts, Music New South Wales. Damn, we're out of here. It was good. Thanks for running about law. Thanks to the lawyers.